My name is Maxim. This is uh, launch series from the Near Protocol. I'm going to be talking today about what the hell is gas, how do we price it, and uh, what are the consequences of not pricing it correctly. You heard that there are tokens, there is gas. What is the difference is that tokens is like an internal currency in our system. And gas is sort of a thing that we use uh, to express cost of the operations that people can do with the blockchain because anything that you can do with the blockchain should cost something. And those are two separate things uh, because uh, we want to define an exchange rate between the tokens and the gas and we want this exchange rate to be dynamically set by the validators depending on how expensive to do certain things at a given moment of time. So there is tokens and there is gas and in between them there is some exchange rate. So gas essentially represents uh, amount of inconvenience that you cause to the validator when you ask them to do certain operation like uh, process a transaction or deploy a contract, call a contract. And so we want certain operations which we have many in our system to be, to have pricing, to, uh, uh, to, be, to cost certain amount of gas. And we have hundreds of operations in the system that have some need to have some certain gas value. And uh, we want this gas value to somehow reflect the amount of inconvenience that we cause to the validator to do this operation. Uh, so a typical operation could be execute certain CPU command, uh, create an account, uh, call a smart contract, deploy a smart contract. And uh, they all take non-zero amount of time to, to execute, and they all take some, have some intensity. Like some operations might require a lot of RAM to run, some operations might require a lot of CPU. And so you could sort of picture it uh, as a graph uh, where, oh, let's say this is RAM here, or maybe like CPU usage, CPU usage on y-axis, and this is time. And we asked some blockchain validator to do something, like create an account. It would look like um, the load that we cause in the validator will look well something like that, probably. So this is going to be a curve. It will take certain amount of time before it's completed, and it will cause certain CPU load on the validator. The same thing for other resources like RAM usage, uh, disk, etc. So uh, when we try to measure how much resources we used on the validator, we need to take into account how long did it take for this operation to execute and how much of the resources we actually used for it. So it's the length of this graph and the area under the curve. Because an operation can be executed really quick, but at the same time it can use a lot of CPU. So we also want to account for that. Uh, so there are two things, the length of the operation in terms of time and the amount of the resources that we used. And currently we are counting only for the length. This is our main focus. And the amount of the resources we used, we don't account it for everything, but only for a few things. Because it's really difficult for now, so we're trying to land with some uh, consistent uh, but simple uh, pricing model for now. And later we will, might include that too, right? So the interesting thing is that even if you have a node running on, on some cloud and we perform the same operation multiple times a minute, we can have different cost of this operation and different time it takes for it to execute. Uh, for instance, the account creation can take different time depending on what is the other stuff happening on the same machine and um, or like uh, how many accounts already exist on this shard and uh, so like when, 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 we, when we call certain operation the distribution of how much time it takes is actually not just like a single uh, spike like five microseconds but it's sort of uh, a fuzzy distributed thing. And 
The problem with that is how do we price this thing? If sometimes our operation takes two microseconds, sometimes it takes 10 microseconds, how do we assign certain financial value to this thing that says this is how expensive to create an account in our system? And that's where the concept of average price and model versus pessimistic price and model comes into play. Uh, so there is average versus pessimistic price and model. And in average price and model, you kind of want to assume that uh, all the operations are going to be the same in terms of time and intensity on average. And in a pessimistic model, you're trying to aim for the very bad case where your operation is sometimes executed 10 microseconds. And um, we can create fully price and model just around average. And what, it, what will happen if we say, for instance, that uh, let's say uh, create an account takes, um, let's say, five microseconds, which is, let's, let's say it's going to be five gas. And we say that you can have only 500 gas per block because we need to limit how many gas you can use in a single block. So that means that on average you're going to have 100 account creations in a block. But then someone can abuse it. Someone can come in and, and for instance, start issuing the account creations that have the property that they take 10 microseconds. And this is going to be what they call grinding. They can slow down our system. In this case, they will slow down twice. Suddenly, no one is doing anything uh, that can be slashed on our system, but at the same time, our block production slowed down twice. And this is grinding. It's like 2x grinding in this case. Um, 2x is probably not the worst thing they can do. Some operations, they have a discrepancy in our system from um, like 10x discrepancy. And therefore, someone can do 10x grinding. Someone can slow down our system 10x times. What happens if we create a pricing model which is pessimistic, where we say that create account takes 10 microseconds and therefore it takes 10 gas? In this case, we're going to have only 50 accounts per block, maximum accounts per block, number of accounts per block that we can create. And our blocks are going to be only half full. So this is a very tricky balance. Uh, we either go with the risk and allow ourselves to be grindable, or we have blocks that are not using us to a full capacity. And in this example, the grinding factor was two. But for many operations, we can have 10x or even more grinding factor. Uh, the problem here arises from the fact that there is a, sometimes a huge gap between average and pessimistic scenario. And in this case, it's like 2x gap. And what contributes to this gap? There are natural uh, issues with pricing, uh, with operations just taking different amount of time to execute. If you, for instance, uh, plug out the power from your laptop, everything is going to be slower running on it, and you will actually notice it if you're running the blockchain node, or you have a different cloud instance running, um, or, or just something happening in background, and you're going to have this distribution of time it takes to do certain operation. Um, this is something which is we cannot really influence in any way. But there are other things we can. Uh, there are explicit and hidden parameters to certain operation. So let's say we're talking about create account operation. Create account takes the name of the account we want to create. So it takes certain parameters, explicit parameters like name of the account. And Let's say the name of the account, the length of it actually affects how long it's going to take to create this account. So we could theoretically price uh, differently depending on what is the length of the account name when we decide how much a gas user should pay for the account creation. But there are also hidden parameters. And hidden parameters are how many accounts already exist in the current system. Because if we have 10,000 accounts in our system versus we have 1 million accounts in our system, the cost will change by orders of the magnitude, more than one order of magnitude. So there is a hidden parameter, which let's say, in this case, would be size of the try, or the logarithm of the number of the accounts. 
in our system. So we need to address these three things. So there is like one is like natural distribution of this computation time parameters and hidden parameters. So if we if we want to address this gap between average scenario and pessimistic scenario, we need to do something with it. And there are two things we can do with the gap. We can either eliminate hidden parameters, and therefore the gap is going to close because there is less of unknown variance to the price of certain operations on our blockchain. Or we can try accounting for these hidden parameters. So we price it differently depending on how many accounts are already in the system. And uh, the second one is more universal approach. Because if you know your system well, you can probably figure out all the hidden parameters. But that makes the economic model more complex. Uh, while the first one, when you completely eliminate, eliminate hidden parameters, it's just harder engineering work. Like you need to design a system that has few hidden economic parameters. And this is really hard. So we're going with uh, dynamic pricing. We're going to price things differently depending on how many accounts you touched while trying to create the current account.